I'm living in a cylinder world and I am a cylinder girl. Oh, living in a cylinder, cylinder. Oh, 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 Shirley. Oh, oh, mm. hello, children. <clears throat> Please come in, sit down. Oh, my. I wasn't expecting you so early. <laughs> I was just excited because today I brought in this shape because I heard Miss Valerie say that we were supposed to be um, collecting shapes, um, three-dimensional shapes, height, oh, vertical, width, horizontal, and the third one, deep. How deep is it? Oh, that reminds me of another song, but I won't go there now. Mm -hmm. um, I collected this as well. This reminded me some, for, for some reason, of a something spacey. Don't you think? It could be part, I don't know what, M maybe for a robot. How about that? I like that. I'm getting all excited. My, my imagination is just going crazy. And so, just like Miss Valerie suggested, I got myself a bag. Where's my bag? Oh, it's over in the corner there. And I will put these in there so I don't step on them and I don't get them in the way. So I heard, I'm so excited for you. You have now known all five nature patterns. It will change the way you look at things. It, it can't help it. By understanding that there's an underlying intelligence, it seems, of the patterns and the way that they're used. Because now you realize that almost never is it just one pattern alone. It's always, almost always, a, a combination. And Miss Valerie, being the fast food lady she is, calls it a combo meal. <laughs> Silly her. But she's absolutely correct. She showed you these artworks, beautiful, aren't they? They're striking. One, because of going from warm, cool, warm, cool, warm, cool. So you've got a contrast of temperatures of colors. But you also have a variety of patterns, radio pattern. And then I hope you can see this. Do you see the red? It's almost like a spiral explosive pattern. Then an orange meander explosive pattern. Variety, my dear friends, the spice of life, and it makes art so interesting. So, these are the way that nature really works. Well, not really, because these are standing still. Nature never stands still. Nature is what we call dynamic, moving, constantly changing. You, well, you know what the fractals do, they dance. You see it on your computer screen as your computer is resting, sends those spiral meander explosive patterns. Yes, indeed. Well, so there it is, the combo meal. Two or more patterns working together. These are called fractals. And in the late 80s, they were discovered and it was revolutionary because we had some idea that we could find the smallest pattern or part or particle of anything. And guess what? We found out that we don't know anything truly. <laughs> now we know that we don't know, but we do know. <laughs> I like that. I like the no in the no thing. So, if you could look closely at one of these, you would see that each one of these is the same patterns repeating over and over and over and over again. It's a fraction because fractions repeat themselves over and over again. Something whole is broken down into equal parts. Then they repeat themselves. It's a fractal. That's a fraction. And these fractions, believe it or not, create, what do you think? Exactly. The nature patterns. Who would have guessed? <laughs> I would. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs>
Oh, so here's some more. I'm going to just hold these up for you for a minute. I, I'm hoping that you can see them. I work with them on Padlet, my dears. And so that you can see, see, oh my gosh, it, boys and girls, this is all about who we are. Yep, and, and the shape should look familiar. The bees use it. It's based on the triangle. The triangle is the most strongest. And so when something needs to have strength, every bridge, every building, look for that triangulation. It makes structures strong. So, these two are examples of fractals. Yes, if you look at it, you can see there's explosive and radial, and some of them has spiral and meander and branching. Each one is different, but they're very similar because they follow the patterns and the rules of those patterns. <laughs> Wonderful. These are done by drawing on styrofoam, coloring with Crayola crayon, having a white paper and pressing down. I'll show you that later. Actually, it'll be on the Padlet. I'd like to show you one more thing today. Are you ready? Now just sit and watch this first time. Then after that, then you can go get your, the things that you'll need to do it, all right? So what you're going to need is a, something circular. I went and got a, one of my plates, a piece of paper, and you're going to lay it on the paper and draw around it. Easy, right? Right. Then cut it out. If you have your studio set up in an orderly fashion, you will always know where your things are. It takes discipline because sometimes artists will get so caught up in their moment that they forget what they were doing the moment before. And they will leave what I like to call a snail's trail. Hmm. I've known people that do that, you know. Now, what I'm doing is I'm opening and closing my fingers. That's a pattern. Did you notice? Thumbs up. I never would cut thumbs down. That puts my wrist in a very awkward position. Thumbs up. See how it lets me go meander? Both ways meander. Truly. Two, little teeny tiny, I'm open, closing, open, closing. Oh, half of it came off already. Now, oh, look at this. Here's a combo of two shapes. The square and the circle makes, what do you know? I wonder if that's what happened when they made the first arch. You never know. The... So many discoveries happen by oopsies. And we have an oopsie, remember meander. We don't get blocked up by the obstacle in our way. We figure out a way to meander around it and we take some of it along with us so we never forget what the obstacle was in the first place. And here we are at the end of the of the line journey that took us right back to our beginning. Miss Valerie's favorite shape, the circle, and I don't blame her. All right, now, this is where our directions are going to take part A or part B. Part A is for my JK, my kindergarten, first and even second grade. Well, third and fourth too, if you want to try both. Then part B, which will be the next step, which makes it harder because there's more things to do. I would expect my third and fourth graders to do it, but oh, absolutely. If anyone wishes to try another group's 
activity, you go right ahead. The only thing Miss Valerie asked is that you please only share your art on your grade level's Padlet. That's consideration, isn't it? It would be so hard. Miss Valerie has almost 500 virtual students. That's a lot of artwork to look at and a lot of artwork to, to write comments about. So if you do your part and put your first last name and your class code, which is your teacher's last name, the first letter, and your grade level, if you do that, and you only share in the sharing column, other than, of course, the free time stuff, which is a whole different thing. But you need your name there, too, please. <laughs> because if I need to ask you something, how am I going to know how to find you? Scientists know. Well, all of the disciplines know. The mathematicians, the scientists, the physicists, the astronomists, the, the geologists, the archaeologists, the, oh my goodness, I'm going to get dizzy thinking of all of them. Let's get back to our art. So, it's math now. Fractions are math. And don't worry about it if you don't understand it all. If you follow the directions that I give you, you will be successful, I promise. And surely Pinky promise. There, Pinky promise. <laughs> oh, all right. First group, little, little people. You are going to fold your paper in half. So it looks like a taco. This is called a semicircle. If you would talk to the big people. Half circle, rainbow, arch. There's lots of names for it. Okay, and did you notice how I made the edges all line up? That's very important because math is very precise now. All right, so we fold it once, and now we're going to fold one more time. Remember, those edges have to meet up. Take your time. We're in no rush. And then press down those edges. All right, do you see it? Quadrant. Quad means one, four. There are four. One, two, three, four. Four areas now for my little people. For my older children, fold once, fold twice, and then you fold one more time. Take it slow. Just like with origami, which is another math form. You must try to get all the edges to line up. I'm telling you this because, not because I want to harp on you or anything. It's the more precise with math magic, at least. Oh, <laughs> that's what we call it here, here in the studio. It's math magic because wait till you see what happens when we take one thing and we apply fractions and repeating itself over and over and over again. Well, just you wait and see. All right, I'm going to stop for right now. I'm going to go get my pencil, my Sharpie, my Crayola markers to color later on, or your crayons or colored pencils, whatever you wish. But you need a pencil and a Sharpie. Little people, I am going to let you use a Sharpie, but goodness sake, only on the artwork, okay? Not on the table, not on your arm, not on your clothes. Thank you very much. Okay, so go get your things. You need a piece of paper. You need some kind of a circle, like a plate to trace, a pair of scissors, a pencil, and a Sharpie, and then whatever coloring material you wish. All right, I'll see you